Hello, and welcome to another episode of Closing Deals in Heels. Today, we have a really incredible, very special guest, Shira McKenzie, who is absolutely epic when it comes to her energy, when it comes to serving people, when it comes to being a leader. And her story is absolutely epic as well. And so I wanted her to come on and to just share with you what it's like being a woman in sales, being a woman that had to, you know, learn and grow and basically step up for herself in a way that no one had stepped up for her before. And if you're a woman that feels like sometimes you haven't had the opportunity to have somebody fight for you and you want to start fighting for yourself, you get to learn from people that have gone through experiences. And so I wanted to bring her up um, really fast. If you're not already following this, please make sure you subscribe to this channel that you follow along. And if you have any comments, please write them down. We're happy to respond to anything that you have. We love your insights, feedback, and for you to share this with any other woman that you feel would benefit. So please welcome up. Hello, queen. Hello. Hello. <laughs> uh, one thing I love about you, Sharon, I'm going to let you introduce yourself real fast, but I love your energy more than anything. Your energy is so contagious. It's so epic. And I just really honor you and I appreciate you for all the stuff that you've been through. Can you just introduce us really fast to who you are and the magic that you really bring into this world? Oh, I appreciate that. It's so great to be here. So uh, I'm Shira McKenzie. Uh, fun story about me. Um, I was born without a middle name and I had a favorite aunt named Joy and she was charisma and magic and energy. And I just loved her. She was also the style, just maven. And so at nine years old, I gave myself the middle name Joy. And so when you talk about my energy and how I show up in the world, I truly believe that that name was a prophecy. And it has not come easily, but it it's like my little nine-year-old self just really kind of set the path for how I was going to navigate all of the challenges of not just being a woman in the world today, a woman in sales, a woman who has to navigate we have our own challenges. So um, it's really great to be here. And I just I just love every conversation that I get to have with you and your audience. So thank you. Yeah, no, I uh, I love that. Nine years old, creating something for herself and stepping into the identity of that. Are you so powerful? Identity is so powerful. And you've been in sales for a long time too. I think 20 years, right? Like how did you even get into Oh, sales? girl, Let's bump that up a little bit. Um, I was thinking back to what got me into sales. I was 21 years old when I started waiting tables wow. at the busiest sports bar in Seattle, Washington. And they had a they would have sales competitions. So it was about upselling the drinks and the foods and the appetizers, you know the drill. And that's what really got me into um, just the taste of more is available. Mm. More, more money is available utilizing my creative gifts is a way to create financial abundance, creating connection with people. And it, I, ever since then I was, I was addicted. So. And now you're in the mortgage industry, right? Yeah. I have been in and around the mortgage industry for 22 years. I started as a loan officer in sales and again, like brand new market, didn't know a soul, had no database. Real estate agents wouldn't talk to me. And I went from zero to 63 million over the span of five years, which was a pretty big deal, you know, back in back in 2013. And then I got into the coaching side and I'm currently a part of just a phenomenal, innovative, I guess we could say startup. We're two years in, but Growth Only Coaching is a just premier coaching hub for really the top 0.5% mortgage professionals, realtors in the country. And so I am heading up all of their sales divisions, of which we're going to have a few. We're actually building a media company to really allow professionals to create their own brand, show up in the in in their communities, in their authentic voice, and really maximize their their sales skills, leverage their relationships, and just create magnificent businesses. So it's been really, really fun to be a part of it. No, I love it. I, I love how you get all excited about this company and like what's possible here. And more importantly, how you did the work to get to here. Right? Yeah. It wasn't like, hey, like I'm in this company and I'm just going to make up as I go. Like you've actually been in there. You've 
done the work, you've you know learned how to create money. Going from zero to sixty three million and uh, sales is like not the easiest path to just go down. Can you like describe like a moment in sales where you felt like you didn't want to do it or that you couldn't? Because I've definitely had that moment. I don't know if you've ever experienced that where you're like, oh my gosh, sales for me. Like, have you ever really felt that and where you questioned? Yeah. And I mean, if anyone listening is in and around the real estate space, you're aware of what transpired in 2008. And at that time, I was two years uh, into my marriage. I got married late. And I had been in a, again, brand new city, brand new market, plugging away, right? Doing all the activities, shaking hands, kissing babies, going to all the networking events, and nothing was happening. Like no business was happening. Very little business was happening. My husband at the time was in pharmaceutical sales and he just hated my business. He hated it because I was always working. I was always on, but there were no results. And he gave me an ultimatum. Wow. And he said, hey, by the end of the year, like, if you're not making money, you're out. Well, (laughs) A, we're not married anymore. Uh, B, (laughs) like that, (laughs) to know me is to know that that did did not sit well with me because I knew instinctively that this was my path. And because I had persevered, because I had laid that foundation, as I was giving my notice on December 15th, this was 2000. It was 2008. My boss just looked at me and she said, I will gladly accept your resignation in June of next year because she over the next 30, 60, 90 days, there is going to be a shift in our business and people are going to rise above and you're going to be one of them. And she proceeded to give me some of her business just to tide me over for a couple of weeks. And within 30 days, I had 31 people in my pipeline that needed loans. I mean, literally went from zero to 30. Needless to say, I went from, you know, making 80,000 to 430 within a couple of years. And my husband, my ex-husband suddenly really, really liked, really liked my job. (laughs) But at that time, in that moment, right when you're on the cusp, right when you're right when you're in that moment where it's like, you know, you're at a fork in the road, Kayla, and it's like, I'm going to persevere and I'm going to decide that I am all in that's when it matters. And, you know, I was thinking today about just the path of sales and the unexpected benefits and the things that nobody tells you about. They they tell us about the income that's available, the ceilings that are available to women in particular. But here's what nobody talks about. Nobody talks about the woman that you become oh. as a result of stepping into that next level. There's a level of expansion if you choose to pursue it and if you choose to be open to it. Mm -hmm. What it's like, I feel like a lot of girls as little girls are designed and wired to think about their wedding day more than like who they're going to become career-wise, like Disney movies, things. And they've changed a little bit now, you know, but like we've all been kind of conditioned to where like one day someone's going to come in, they're going to rescue us. And the moment where you've had like some crazy like lows and you realize that you're the person that rescues you, which I'm totally open for like, you know, men to be in our life and everything else. I'm not saying anything, but, sure. but it's like there's a, a certain confidence and there's a certain like belief in you that happens when you did it for you. Yeah. When you lie on yourself, like, hey, no matter what, like no matter what happens, I got me. You know, what do you, what else do you feel like besides that? Do you wish that more women in sales knew, you know, besides just that? Well, I mean, a couple of things. And to kind of build upon that last one, because this is really important, what I would have, oh man, what I would have told my younger self, I was always someone who gravitated toward personal development, kind of, but I didn't really immerse myself in in really discovering that practice until gosh like mid 30s and so when i talk about the possibility of being able to expand in a sales career i would i would say to anyone in their 20s especially like women like <laughs> gals if you are just starting out like invest everything that you can into emotional resiliency, personal development, figure out who you are 
as a person, because I'll tell you, all of the investment that I made in myself between 35 and, how old was I? 51 allowed me to move through the most traumatic, derailing experience of my life. So when my marriage imploded in the worst possible way, just think back to Lifetime movie, like, you know, it, yeah. it would have been so easy and it was so justifiable for me to just kind of check out. And I did for a little bit, but because I had invested in myself and continued to do that, and I was continually allowing myself to be open to new possibilities, to stretching myself, to being more competitive, to honing in on my skill skills, what ended up happening was I was able to move through that period and become even stronger. And then what started happening is that I started to see opportunities that I wouldn't have before. And and I think what what's important to know for anyone that is either in sales or embarking on sales is that the one thing that nobody tells you is that everyone always knows what you're thinking and what you're feeling. Mm. So if I'm feeling resentful, angry, frustrated, ticked off, pissed off, and I claim to hide it because I can do that really well. I can mask it and I could put a nice sheery smile on it, but people can feel that tension, right? And that's something that I didn't learn until later. Like, wait a minute, there's no such thing as just, oh, I can just compartmentalize. And that's what I love so much about what you're creating here, Kayla, the work that you do, because there, there are things and, you know, there are things that we move through in life that if not healed, if not addressed, they're going to impact yeah. your sales. They're going to impact your results, right? Of course. And that's why I feel like sales is so much more than just the skills. Like yes. you just said that you had, a, you know, like investments, you had a toolbox of tools that you could have used because you had access to them right? Yeah. The emotional tools to use. And I feel like a lot of women need both. Like you don't need to just have sales skills. You need to know how to overcome your own crap so you don't bring it to a call. Yeah. Right. Uh, 80% of the time in, you know, I've been, now that I've been on the coaching side, I was coaching for eight years and I was coaching a lot of high, high achieving, high performing women. Right. And 80% of them didn't realize that they were bringing their baggage yes. into their work. They really thought that they were covering it up. And as soon as they would get on Zoom, I knew instantly. I could feel, you can feel it. We're all energetic beings. Yes. And so you really, it's so important in sales to be operating at just that really high level. So is your physical body in tune? Are you moving throughout the day? Are you breathing? Are you, are you nourishing your body in a way that's going to elevate you versus you know, deflate you or or de-energize you. All of those things come into play. And it's just fascinating is when you get to that place and you've practiced those ways of being and thinking, yeah. you can feel that too. 100%, you know, yeah. and that it's our ability to be in tune with ourself is important. Like, can you just check in and be like, hey, how am I feeling right now? Because you being able to do that, being self-aware. And then secondly, having people around you where you can ask for support is going to be crucial so that you can make it through your day. So it's not just you against you trying to figure it out. Like you get to be able to articulate what's going on and ask for support. Um, Kim, I am curious though, because you've been in sales for a while. You experiencing any DQ? Like, yes, neuro emotional questioning. You're newer in it, but I, I'm curious, like, how has that been affected your sales process, your thoughts on it? Like what's about wow. aha, uh -huh, just so we can kind of understand your perspective here. Oh, I got a big one. And I I have to believe this is gonna land with a very large percentage of the women that are listening to this right now. So I am very high energy. My middle name is Joy, and I walk into a room and I own it. And yes, I'm charismatic and I'm always looking at things from the positive. So naturally, people are attracted to me, right? I have a very high vibe personality. And that has worked for me in sales. 
in mortgage building relationships in sales i'm you know it's I, it's it's it has been often easy for people to say yes i'm going to tell you what happened to me this week mm-hmm. as i realized that that beautiful aspect of me and i'm speaking to anyone out there on my high vibe high energy super personality gals one of the biggest shifts this week, and it just occurred on a call today because I implemented it after really internalizing it last night, the importance of tonality mm. and consciously toning down that energy, not to dim my light, mm. but to meet people where they are. Mm. <laughs> So that, so good. Wait, wait for it, so that I am not, through all my high vibe joy bombing, instigating massive sales resistance. Yeah. And I was like, oh, snap. Like, that's, I mean, that's just one. I mean, how much time do we have? I could, I could, I could go on, but uh, the tonality, the yeah. thing. And, and also, I'm going to speak to a lot of women out here too, I think, I have a feeling, some might be like me, um, I, sold from, I sold from my personality. I sold from a coaching perspective, like, hey, let's be buddies and this is going to be great for you. I mean, there was an intention of whatever I was providing was going to serve them, but there was no scripting and there was no structure. And I always resisted that because, you know, I'm a free spirit. I can't be bothered with structure. And here's the thing, gals, ladies, <laughs> we need to be able to lead people powerfully yeah, through a conversation that's going to allow them to see for themselves, to articulate for themselves, to persuade themselves why where they are is not okay mm-hmm. and why it is so critical that they change now. Yeah. And that we empower them to do that. That's so good. And I fully hear you and resonate with you. And it comes to the high vibe personality. And like, I talk really fast. Yeah. My brain's going 100 miles an hour. And I like to say all the things. Big smile, big smile. People are like, girl, tone it down. Right? Yeah. It's really interesting because when you allow yourself, exactly what you said, meet them where they're at, what you're doing is you're caring enough about them to put yourself aside for a moment, not in a, a, a martyr way, but in a, yeah. a surrendering, honoring way. Like, hey, like this is not about me. This is about you. Exactly. Mm-hmm. Exactly. And listen, if you've been practicing like I have for, oh, dear God, 40 years, I don't even know how that's possible, but, you know, of making it, not making it about me, but like, I, I just, I didn't know what I didn't know. Right. So I was just leading with this really, really high powered energy that for some was just overpowering. It didn't leave any space for them to be them. And I, what was so cool today is as I was in this conversation with this, with this gentleman, I just felt myself just drop down mm. and I saw him lean in. Mm. And then I listened and I listened to his words and I, I was listening, you know, we talk about those power words, right? That people will use that are the indicator of where the pain is. And I just, from the most purest place was like, how really is that affecting you though? Mm. Personally. And he just opened up and the conversation went in an entirely different and. You could, I could just feel his energy. I, he felt heard. He felt seen. And more importantly, he realized, holy shit, like, this is, uh, my business is horrible right now. I'm doing nothing. And I'm literally fading into the, into the woodwork when I should be stepping up as a leader and building my business and leading my team. You know, I mean, he, he just was able to see it, not because of what I did. Well, it's because you create a safe space. Yes. You know, you were able to create a safe space to where they could see something. And, you know, I, I love that we've gotten on here and you've been like really modest, you know, in regards to like you crushing it right now. 
because I know that you're crushing it right now. Um, you know, I don't want to give numbers, but like just in terms of like how many deals have you been able to close within the past like month or so? Like, could you give us like insight on that or like, or whatever? Yeah, I mean, in this in this new position, I mean, I remember my first day, um, you know, we were chatting my first day. I had two calls on the calendar and and both closed, you know, and paid in full. And this was another thing too. I, I just, oh, I love everything about sales because you're always learning. And I was always compensated based on total revenue. It was never about really cash collected. And so that's that's now as one of the leaders of this company, right? Like it's like, okay, if we're growing, your cash is king. And so I was in a in a position a few years back, similar selling a co in in a coaching space where, you know, it was, oh, or, or can I get them to say yes to this monthly amount? And now it's, yeah, it's 7,800 paid in full. It's 14 grand paid in full. And and people are just like, yeah, here, mm. let's go. There's no, there's no resistance because the line, the, the line and level of questions that are being asked is allowing them to see how powerful they are and what's available to them. So, you know, I, I'm a freak about numbers. I love stats and numbers and all the things. I've got a I've got a board up here. Um, but in the first, I think in the first nine days of June, um, I think I'd brought on 12 people um for about 56K. So it's it's but it's fun, right? It's like, I mean, I have a I I've just decided 40 people, 40 lives are being changed this month within my me, though. That's what I'm talking about. It's not like, hey, I'm trying to close 40 deals. It was 40 lives being changed this month that's the difference and if women and if people can get into that mindset it will change everything for you because when you come to the call you don't have desperate energy you have no there's none and it's so important to also to create to create an environment that's going to nurture that right and so you know part of my environment i love i love creating like these corny big post-it notes on the wall like i have got 40 squares and they're counting down and i put the cash collected next to them and it's fun and i look at it I'm looking at it right now. And also to immerse yourself in the community for the love of God. Like, do not go this alone. Don't do it. Like, we need accountability. We need community. We need to be surrounded by other women always, no matter what season of life you're in, no matter what stage of business you're in, where there are going to be women that are lifting, pulling you up and showing you the way, providing you with a playbook and a guide. But also where there are women that, that you can reach down and help them and support them as well. Like it, we need to be doing this together. And man, again, I would just say to my 20 year old self, like just, just be open always to the idea that there is always room for expansion, no matter how much you think, you know, I know I'm going to be learning for the rest of my life. Right. And that's why, you know, this was just the easiest yes in the world for me. I was like, oh my gosh, I just, I can't wait for how much more I'm going to learn, how many more lives I'm going to transform, how much more impactful I get to be as a result of you, Kayla, being a stand for this community of women, right? Like, I mean, it's just, it's just really, really neat. So yeah, there are tools and there are tactics and there are strategies and processes. And at the end of the day, if you're trying to do it on your own, it's going to, you might get there, but it's like me driving to the other side of the country without ways. Ain't gonna happen. Like it's just, I will turn around and come back home. So anyway, yeah, you do and your knowledge and your heart so much for being here today. So, do you feel like there's like anything else like that you want to say for any woman that's listening to this right now and like wanting to grow, wanting to be more like maybe in her mind, she's like, oh, but that's them, not me. Like, is there any? Oh, yes, yes, yes. And amen. Um, every single one of us is created in this unique, special, amazing, magical way, right? And each of us have been placed on a path. I, I say this all the time, like you have no competition. I have no competition because there is no one that can deliver or show up in a way that is uniquely Shira. I'm the only Shira. You're the only Kayla. I can't be you. I can admire and be grateful for all of your gifts and your contribution, 
But for me to waste even an ounce of energy, and trust me, I spent decades. So please, y'all, please do what I say, not as I did, right? Like to spend any amount of energy being sad that I'm not you or being resentful that I'm not you or wishing, oh my gosh, if only I could be like X, Y, Z, it literally minimizes your ability to impact. And there are people out there that are praying for a solution that only you can deliver. So then it becomes up to us. Okay, how do I get to be the best, brightest version of myself? Give yourself a middle name if it helps, right? But get yourself into a community, get yourself into that training and that support, find resources that are gonna allow you to elevate your skill set so that you can show up as the best version of yourself. Because there's nobody, there's no other you. Like that's your value prop. It's mm -hmm. not your company, it's not your widget, it's not your thing, it's you. Oh, so much. I think that really resonates. You know, I heard one time um, that if you ever see somebody and you like something about them, then we're all our mirrors for each other. So like if I see something about you that I honor, it's because that is inside of me, the potential is inside of me too, right? And so just realize that anything you ever see about someone that you admire is an attribute, a characteristic that's in you that's possible for you. Um, ladies, I honor you. Thank you so much here for being here today. I'll make sure we have your contact go here if anyone wants to contact you or if you are a mortgage loan um, officer and you need help with your media, right? Please reach out to uh, Shira. She can help and support you as much as possible. Anything else you want to say before we tune off? Let's go rock it out. Let's let's go make some magic happen. Let's go get some sales. Let's go change some lives. Let's go get it. Amen. All right, ladies, we'll see you next time. Bye.